Because we know what it means for their future. Absolutely. It's changing their genetics. They're going to have a different life's experience as a result of building a better foundation and being healthier and not breaking down their bodies early and keep breaking them down until finally they're suffering from, it's not aging disease, it's lifestyle disease. <laughs>Day two of being Day two. Oh, <laughs> we're back. We are going to answer um, a response to one of our subscribers, and I'm not going to give her name, and it's not even a question that she had. It's just a, a great answer that she gave in one of our blogs, and that is talking about genetics and obesity. And um, a lot of people feel that obesity is genetic and there's nothing you can do about it. So that said, obesity is a lot of genetics. There's a lot of genetics that has to do with obesity, right? Sure seems that way. <laughs> um, but there's lifestyle also that you can do something about it. So we have some very good friends and they... The, the point being that our lifestyle is most influenced by our environment where we've been, which is also where our genetics came from, not from the environment, for, from the people who were there. And there may be genetics. You may be, you know, plum shape or apple shape or large legs or large arms and that just runs in your family. And no matter what you do to have the rest of you healthy, that may still be a little You large. know, I, I read an article about the number of fat cells that we're born with, what it, it talked about was from infant forward, how they developed when you were under the age of like 18. And after 18, you didn't increase the number of fat cells, but prior to that, you did. So it's those formative years where the number of fat cells is determined. But what it didn't address is how many you started with. Right. And I don't know if there's been research on that. I, I actually to, to have read some of that and I'm not going to speak to it because I don't remember it. But, but that would be genetic, that, that you're, you're, start, you're inheriting the number of fat cells. Right. And but they don't what, go away. That's something that sticks with you. So that's a reality, no doubt about it. But what you put in those fat cells, in your body to go into those fat cells, you have every bit of control over. And so... Um, the ability to change our lifestyle is nothing new that we talk about. So our hormones have a great deal to do with it. The person who talked to me on, or to us on our vlog, talked about that she's working really hard and she's super healthy and has made giant strides, but that her hormones are causing her problems. And that is what a reality. What kind of problems is she suggesting? Is it She's like, still having trouble with weight. Still, okay, okay, that kind so of problem. Okay, so hormones are incredibly important in our life, and that's why we have endocrinologists. One of the people that we follow, and I'm not going to put her book up here because YouTube didn't like it the last time I did. So one of the per people that I follow is Diane Swart Diana Swartzbein. She's an endocrinologist. And she wrote a, a great book called The um, Swartzbine Principle. I actually follow The Swartzbine Principle too because she wrote the first one so long ago. She's come out with several things that needed a change. There are still some things in here that I don't do. She's, I, she's still learning. She's still changing and, and adapting because she doesn't use the normal diabetic diet. And she changes her patient's lifestyles by the things that she teaches them. And one of our followers is her patient, I found out. I am so jealous. Probably a couple <laughs> of them are because... She's out of California. Yeah. Anyway, um, what I wanted to talk to you about is one of the things that she said is if your hormones are not in order, not working, they're malfunctioning, then the rest of your body cannot get in order and lose the weight and eat right and have all the disease go away. So there's a few, a few um, disorders that are hormone related. And uh, so I'm just gonna go through a couple of them, or, or a few of them. There's some that make our, um, our insulin level very high. And one of them is a tumor 
excuse me while I look down, a tumor on our pancreas. Well, not everybody's gonna get a tumor on their pancreas, but a lot of us have high insulin levels. The high insulin comes from high carbohydrate. Is that a surprise to you? We've been, we've been knowing that for nine years now. And, um, and, and we've put it in practice. We have and, put it in it, practice. Uh, whether or not there are other things going on to make the difference, the reduction in the, the carbohydrates has made a difference in that for us. So, so high insulin causes um, high uh, plaque to build up in your body. It causes diabetes 2. It causes heart disease and um, high blood pressure and strokes. So what happens is, um, I, I wanna just, there, there are several different hormone disorders. There's Hashimoto's disease, which is a low or no thyroid. Um, only one, four out of a thousand people have that. I know two people, so that's kind of weird. Well, you know a lot of people, you probably know several thousand people, so. Yeah, that's true. That is true. <laughs> Um, so that's one way, that's a disorder that happens with the body, but if you can cause the exact same thing by high adrenaline. So we always talk about the food that we eat. Well, some of our other lifestyles have to do with the stress in our life. So high adrenaline and ho high cortisol levels have to do with things that a glandular disorder could have but you don't have that glandular disorder, so there's something you can do about it. So you're saying a glandular disorder or these high levels could cause it. And if you're doing things that cause those levels to go up, it will seem as though you have a glandular disorder. You'll have the same right, bodily responses. Right, but there's responses, something you can do about it. But you can change. Instead of having okay. a, a surgery or a prescription, you can eat and change your lifestyle. So you prescribe food you prescribe your the, the prescription yes. is a lifestyle change yeah this is this is your choice you don't have to, to to get on a medication regimen you don't have to go buy the pills get them now you have to refill them every couple of days when you go to the grocery store or wherever you buy your food but, cute yeah but i just want to talk about this high adrenaline and high cortisol for a moment uh we experienced that the week before the wedding our son was Mr. Calm, everything under control, there's nothing I can't handle. Beyond stressed. <laughs> beyond stressed. Sleeping four hours a night. Um, j not stressed because of what he was doing, uh, what he was going to do. He wanted to marry his bride. Well, he wanted everything to be perfect. And he wanted to take care of all of his family. And, and he was just the most loveliest host. But it he took a, a toll. He was a stressed host. <laughs> he was a toast. Uh, he was he, a toasted he, host. He was a toasted host. There you go. <laughs> so <laughs> I want to tell you some of the things that high adrenaline does to your body. It can cause asthma and allergies and depression and migraine headaches and bone loss. Those are some things you wouldn't even equate those with, oh wow, I'm too busy, I'm too stressed, I'm not sleeping, my adrenaline level, I'm in fight or flight mode all the time. That's what's causing, more than likely, those symptoms. Asthma, allergies, migraines, bone loss. So essentially, depression. high stress is gonna break down your, your body parts, your body functions, and eventually you get pretty sick and uh, yeah you know it it goes beyond being burnt out burnt out is like just mentally emotionally you're shot but this this is taking your body down which could contribute to that well feeling and that, it's funny that, that you say burn out because we're not going to talk about this today but remember we're talking about high adrenaline adrenaline comes from the adrenal glands which are back here on the kidneys. You started there. I started there, sorry. Not here. <laughs> That's the thyroid. Different kind of anatomy <laughs> um, going on. So, and the adrenal glands do burn out. And when you have burnout adrenal glands, then you're pretty sick. So when they're gone, they're gone? No, you can bring them back. Okay. Absolutely. So then cortisol does the same thing, and you have the bone loss, and you can also get, develop diabetes from having your cortisol levels too high because it kicks out insulin and sends that through your body. But the last one that I wanna talk about is the high blood sugar. So our high blood sugar can come from a low-fat diet, from 
chronically having poor nutrition, from not enough sleep, from alcohol, from stimulants, from sugar and other things. And when we do this for a long period of time, it can even come from over-exercising, where we put our bodies through too much, and under-exercising, then we start to have these little things that we call aging problems. They're not. We don't call them that. We don't. Society does. Society does. So we can ha develop heart disease. We develop plaque in our arteries. So what we can say is one of the reasons they're called aging diseases is that typically they begin to afflict people as they get older right. because their body has broken down and finally is not able to keep going. I mean, our, our bodies are amazing. Yeah, you they're can resilient. do this for 10 to 30 years and then in the very end they're going to go, oh wow, I've got diabetes now. Well, you actually started it 10 to 30 years before and your body was telling you, hey, your blood pressure is high, your insulin is high, your blood sugar is high, you're getting plaque. But, but a lot of times it's not enough to cause a problem. So you're, you're normal you just, like or everybody else. you just else. think it's a normal thing. Oh, yeah. I've just got to take you're my like medication. You're like everybody else. Take your medications. Yep. You go on. Your body breaks down more. And eventually you're suffering from aging disease. Give me a break. <laughs> so... What we're saying here is lifestyle is huge. It's huge. It's huge. Right. There's the way we eat, the way we sleep, the way we take care of ourselves emotionally. One way or the other, you have a lifestyle. And if your lifestyle says, I'm going to do what I want to do, and eventually I'm going to get sick and feel horrible, and then not be able to do the things I like to do, and that's my lifestyle. I love it. Um, <laughs> I don't think that's a good choice. So, you do have something to do with your genetics. You can change your genetics. You can make your lifestyle be so that those genetics are still in the background, but you have taken control of your own life and your own body, and the prescription that you take is one that you've decided to eat, exercise, and be emotionally well. And here's a thought for you. You can change the genetics of your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren, if you have them, by helping them understand where they're headed with a lot of the habits that they have. Many many are doing... I am amazed at how many young people oh, are, are so much doing better. their utmost to eat the right kinds of foods, the healthy foods, and staying away from the processed foods. And, and in fact... A family, a little family related to us that I met this weekend, they no longer, soda pop is not even talked about in their house, juice is not used anymore, they drink water and milk and they drink small amounts of milk so that they're, you know, not getting over sugar. We do not feed our kids Kool-Aid and think that they are not going to get obese. We don't feed them those things. So my families are starting to eat healthy and it's making me so happy. <laughs> yeah, because we know what it means for their future. Absolutely. It's changing their genetics. They're going to have a different life's experience as a result of building a better foundation and being healthier and not breaking down their bodies early and keep breaking them down until finally they're suffering from, it's not aging disease, it's lifestyle disease. If you've waited till the very end here, I'm going to say this disclaimer. Everybody eats different. What we eat, what our healthy diet is, somebody else's healthy diet is different than ours. In fact, our healthy diet right now isn't as strict as it was nine years ago, and it needs to be. But when we're eating with people, we don't offend them by not eating. We just eat less of what they're eating. Right now, I'm cooking, so... <laughs> Good few choices. <laughs> um, but I know that I we can get a huge amount of people disagreeing with things and that's okay it's a healthy discussion but whatever it is you choose to eat whether you're choosing to be a vegetarian or whether you're choosing to eat what we eat and you know you're balanced of everything and I'm not saying you're not balanced if you're not eating vegetarian veg eating meat but for us we wouldn't be it's important for us to be I, I, I think it, we need to acknowledge vegetarians it's 
and most know this, it's far more important that they do balance yeah. because they, they yeah. need to get... Because we're in a vegetarian house right yeah. here. And, and, and they, they make a real, uh, they, they go to well. long links to yeah. make certain that they're eating that balance they need to have so they're getting all the nutrients, vitamins, minerals that they need, enzymes. On so, and on. let's hear from you. This will probably open yeah, a can well, of worms. Lots of discussions. We want to hear your thoughts, your feelings, your experiences. It's great to share. Thanks.